I said, Jack, do you know how to climb up a mountain? He said, I don't know, Dada. And I said, one step at a time. He said, one step at a time. And he repeated that back. As we're climbing up the last part of the mountain, he had this newfound energy and he kept yelling, one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. And he kept climbing. Before you know it, he was at the top of the mountain. It really, it just takes one step at a time. Welcome to the Physicians and Properties Podcast. The show where we teach you how investing in real estate can give you the freedom to practice medicine and live life how you want. Doctor. 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 Now, here's your host, Dr. Alex Schlow. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Physicians and Properties Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Alex Schlow, and I am so glad and so grateful that you're willing to take your time, your valuable, precious time listening to me on another podcast episode. So thank you. I sincerely mean that. This episode is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more reflective. I've been thinking of this podcast a little bit more as like a, a journal of my journey, reaching towards financial freedom and what that looks like. Recently, I celebrated my 32nd birthday and I think back to just how incredibly blessed that I am, how incredible of a family I have. My wife, Stephanie, is absolutely amazing. My two boys, Jack and Owen, are healthy. They're growing. They're happy. It has been such an honor to be their dad and to be a husband. I think about my job. Although it's tough, what a privilege it is to get to take care of military members and their families. It's an honor. And I think sometimes we, we don't take as much time to reflect about where we've come from and kind of that gap and gain mentality that we've talked about before. It's huge. So take some time to reflect. I wanted to share a, a story with you that I experienced and hopefully it motivates you like it motivated me. And it's been something that I've been thinking about constantly since it happened. This past weekend to celebrate my birthday, we went to Rocky Mountain National Park in our camper, which I've talked about before, which was absolutely the, the best investment I've ever made. And it's just such valuable time. My son, Jack, he's three and a half. He loves the outdoors just like his dad. I mean, he just lights up when he's outside. I just love spending time in nature, being a boy, getting dirty, splashing in the creek, finding rocks, playing with sticks, going on hikes. He just absolutely loves it. That's where I feel like I'm most alive is in nature. And that's where he does as well. It's just been so cool to see that. While we're at Rocky Mountain National Park, there's this incredible drive called Old Fall River Road that goes up towards Trail Ridge Road, which is the highest continuous paved road in the continental United States. And it is just absolutely breathtaking in this alpine environment. It is gorgeous. We decided that we were going to spend the day doing the single track or single lane dirt road that runs up to Trail Ridge Road, which is Alpine territory. And as we're driving up there, Jack is mentioning that he wants hot chocolate, which is at the top of Trail Ridge Road. Really great hot chocolate and really great cinnamon rolls. But why that's important is Jack was really motivated to have this hot chocolate. And we said, hey, buddy, we're going to have this after we do a hike. Well, Owen, our two-month-old, needed to be fed. My wife was like, hey, how about you and Jack go on a hike and, and come back when I'm done? And we'll go get some hot chocolate and go from there. So Jack was really excited for this hike. And so we decided to hike up a mountain. It's actually called Marmot Point, which is off of that road. This was a steep hike. It was over 500 feet of elevation gain and only half a mile. So not a very far hike for me, but a far hike for those little three-and-a-half-year-old legs. Jack was motivated. He took off running up the hill initially, and it was amazing. We saw an elk coming over the ridge. We saw a bunch of marmots and pikas, and it, just an amazing, serene environment. As we're going up, Jack had so much energy as he made that initial run up. He was starting to get tired and maybe a little bit discouraged about halfway through, but he kept going. Uh, which was amazing to see that resilience. Then we got about three quarters of the way to the top and there was a false summit. And you could tell that he was let down. He was disappointed. He said, dad, dad, I want to go back and see mama. And I want to see Owen. I was like, buddy, we are so close to the top. You can see it there. And you could tell he was a little bit discouraged. And we have this thing that we'll do if he gets hurt, you know, and he's bleeding or whatever else, I'll take him to the mirror and I'll tell him to look in the mirror and I'll say, who's tough? He goes, I'm tough. And he yells it. And he is. And I want him to believe. So I said, Jack, who's tough? And he said, I'm tough. And I asked him, I said, Jack, do you know how to climb up a mountain? He said, I don't know, Dada. And I said, one step at a time. He said, one step at a time. And he repeated that back. As we're climbing up the last 
part of the mountain, he had this newfound energy and he kept yelling one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. And he kept climbing. Before you know it, he was at the top of the mountain. It really, it just takes one step at a time. And it's so cool. Now, after we've returned, I'll just randomly ask him and I'll say, Jack, do you know how to climb a mountain? And he'll just yell one step at a time. It's awesome. I think as a father, if I can just instill that, if he really understands that life and these hurdles and these difficult things that we experience, all you have to do is just one step at a time and keep going. That's all you need. So hopefully you needed to hear that today. I hope that's helpful. One of my favorite stories to share as a family med doc, there's a patient who also took her health upon herself one step at a time. She was approximately 350 pounds when I first met her. Diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia on numerous medications. And the patient behind her canceled her appointment. So I knew, hey, I have 40 minutes to talk with this patient. Everyone listening to this has felt that rush. Like really a 20 minute appointment is like five minutes after they get checked in and the med reconciliation is done and the tech finishes the intake and everything, vitals, et cetera. So I knew, hey, I have extra time to spend with this patient and I'm going to spend that as I should, really building that relationship, meeting her where she is and realizing, hey, how can I change her health? So often we're stuck in these like very quick appointments and we just have to put a bandaid on a smaller problem or we don't have time to really get to the foundation. Why is their health so poor? What are they eating? What are they doing? What are they exercising? How's their mental health? All these things that are so important for the care of our patients. So going back to this patient, I knew I had this extra time to talk with her. She, as I mentioned, uh, morbidly obese on numerous medications. I talked with her and, and we established that relationship. And I just asked her, I said, hey, you seem motivated to improve your health, but how much are you exercising right now? She's like, Dr. Shaw, I'm not exercising at all. I, I don't have desire to like really get up and start exercising, but I know I need to and I want to, but I just don't know where to start. So I said, hey, how about during each commercial when you're watching a TV show, why don't you just get up? and walk in place. Just during the commercial, sit back down, see how you feel. Then let's see about, hey, maybe the next week you do one block around the neighborhood, and then that'll turn into two blocks and three blocks. And before you know it, you'll be walking miles. I told her this, and, and to be completely honest, I, I didn't know if it was going to stick or not. But a year later, I've been following up with her, and a year later, she has lost over 100 pounds. She is off all of her medications. She's no longer diabetic. Her cholesterol looks amazing off of statins, and she's no longer hypertensive. She is doing absolutely amazing. And I just want you to know that that one step at a time that she did when she first started exercising now has led to where she's running 5Ks. She's never run one in her life. And she's running 5Ks and she's motivated to run a half marathon or a marathon within the next year. The coolest part about all of that is this. She went back home to visit. She said her mom was in similar health conditions as she was. She was morbidly obese, diabetic, hypertensive, hyperlipidemic. She told her mom exactly what I said. Hey, mom, why don't you just start exercising one step at a time during commercials and, and see where that goes. Her mom has now also lost over 100 pounds and is off all of her medications it works. These hard things in our life, these challenges in our life, we just have to take one step at a time and just keep moving forward. I think about that story so much because that is what family medicine is all about. That is what medicine should be. That is what primary care should be. We have to look at the whole patient. We have to approach it from, hey, what are the ways that we can really impact their health? Unfortunately, time limitations, patient requirements and a number of patients that need to be seen per day and all these things that are unfortunately semi out of our control can impact that. But I just want you to think about one step at a time at some point in your life, what is a hurdle that you are going through and how can you just take one step? Anyways, I hope that that is helpful for you. I know it's not very heavy real estate focused or entrepreneurial focused, but you can look at is also, hey, how can I analyze one deal at a time or how can I purchase my first property. It's all one step at a time, no matter how you look at it. If you have a similar story, I would absolutely love to hear that because it's so motivating to hear these stories. It's a good reminder of why we become physicians, why we are physicians, and just how important patient care really is and how 
that one patient interaction can transform numerous lives. And sometimes we don't get to see that and we don't get to hear that and we don't get that positive reinforcement of what we did makes a difference, but know what you're doing makes a difference. So please share this podcast with uh, someone that you think might benefit from this. And if you'd like to, I'd really appreciate a five-star rating and a review. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Physicians and Properties. I hope you have a great day. Hey, real quick, if you're still listening to this, I'm assuming you got value from it. So I need your help specifically. My two-year vision with this podcast is to help 100,000 physicians learn how investing in real estate can give you the freedom to practice medicine and live life how you want. There are two main ways that a podcast grows. One is the ratings and reviews, and the other is word of mouth. If you can please leave me a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, as well as send this to one to two friends that you think would get value from it, we can reach the physicians that we want to reach. Thanks in advance and talk to you on the next episode. Please note that the information shared on this podcast is for informational purposes only. It should not be considered financial or medical advice. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the host and the guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of Defense or the United States Air Force.